okay. It says it's setting it up. However, I've been fooled by this before. We're already actually live. So, <laughs> all right. Redirecting to Facebook Live. We are going live. My producer says we did it or we didn't do it. She gave me the we thumbs did. up. Nice. Okay. Now, there we are. There we, we are. are official. We are Recording. here. I feel very confident. I brought someone who knows about technology with me today. So, Amazing. so we're live on Zoom. We're live on Facebook. And one thing I forgot one time, which was not good, is that I have to turn on the chat and the attendees so that I can see who's here or if they have questions. Um, so because I have someone with me today, you can ask questions. If you're here with us on Zoom, you can ask questions in the chat room. If you're watching on Facebook Live, you can actually interact there. Tell us you're here, wave, say hi. And Cassidy, who is here looking out for me, will respond to you or you know, elbow me and tell me there's something I need to pay attention to. Um, she's already advised me that when we take the tour later, not to bump into things. So <laughs> we're going to be careful. Um, so welcome to everybody. This is Daniel J. Moore of Daniel J. Moore Design. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> welcome. We came to him. Um, luckily, he made his space available to us um, at a less than distance. Um, but we're going to take a tour and have a good time. You're going to learn about entrepreneurship and all the things that Dan has going on here in Fauquier County, which is a lot. Um, if you don't know him, he has a lot. He's shaking his head, but it's true. So, Dan. No, I'm, I'm like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> because I asked and you said yes. No, why do I have so many things? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Do we need to go there today? <laughs> Could be a therapy session. Right. Um, actually, we're going to talk more about entrepreneurship. Um, so tell us about all the businesses that you have. The, the main business, the um, umbrella business is what I call it, is 8393 West Main, which is yes. the address. Um, but it's also the name of the business and it houses other businesses. So right. tell us what all of that encompasses. Well, there's, there's, there, there are two uh, main entities. So there's 8393 West Main um, and that I co-own that business with my friend Diana. And under the 8393 West Main umbrella, we run two businesses, uh, the drawing room events and uh, uh, the rooms up there, accommodations. So that is 8393. And then my legal entity is David and Daniel Design LLC. Um, there has not been a David for about 10 years. Um, okay. But that's how that started up in New York. Uh, in 2007. Um, and so underneath, so the, I, I, I uh, operate as a DBA. Um, I do business as Daniel J. Moore Design. Thank you. <laughs> we get a lot of alphabet soup yeah. with all of our entrepreneurs because yeah. we're so used to the acronyms, but yes, thank yeah. you. Spell out everything yeah. you can if you don't mind. So uh, Daniel J., uh, David and Daniel Design does business as Daniel J. Moore Design now. And then there's a retail shop, um, uh, in relation to that, which is domestic aspirations, which is where we're sitting right now. Excellent. We're going to see all of it soon. We're going to take yeah. a tour. Um, but go ahead, tell yeah. us the rest. And then 8393 the also uh, subleases two spaces in this facility. So 8393 West Main LLC owns 8393 West Main, the property. Um, and then uh, two businesses, as I said, the drawing room and the rooms up there. And then we sublease space to. Um, Gathered Stems Floral Couture, uh, which is our Marshall neighborhood florist, and also Hunt Country Kitchen and, and Bath Studio. And Hunt Country Kitchen and Bath Studio is exactly that. It's a kitchen and bath design studio. And Daniel J. Moore Design and Hunt Country Kitchen and Bath Studio uh, collaborate often. Excellent. Which is great for me. And great I'm for sure her. it's great for yeah. her too. That's a, and we'll see. I, she's not yeah. here. Um, she's Kathy, not, but that's uh, Kathy um, Gray. Kathy Gray owns business. that business. She isn't yep. here today, but we'll wave and we'll look at her beautiful space as we take our yep. tour later. And then uh, uh, Gathered Stems Floral Couture is owned by Ashley Bates. She actually operates out of McLean, but this oh. is her new storefront here. She had a storefront there, but now her storefront is here. But she also um, operates out of a design studio and has many clients in that area and in DC. Oh, great. Yeah. People were like, where is she? When is she opening her? I'm like, she's open. She's been open for a long time. She's been in the industry for decades. Oh, wow. So she's she's good. It just, Corona. <laughs> we're gonna get to that too. It has, yeah. it has taken its yeah. toll in so. several places. Um, so 
I am glad you're still here. Yeah, um, me too. Sign out front open, but by appointment only. Yes, yeah, so we um, are. So just, yeah, you know. that's how we're accommodating. Um, I had an appointment on Monday, and um, we're, we are taking appointments, but um, at minimum 48 hours apart, so that if yeah. things, you know, because it's a shop, and so if I'm not on top of everyone, and someone's picked something up, you know, we're trying to give as much time as possible for things to kind of self sanitize. But we are proactively sanitizing, you know, doorknobs and surfaces. Um, and then we have uh, hand sanitizing, hand sanitizing stations. Throughout. Excellent. I'm not sure I'd advertise that. <laughs> yeah. They're very sought after right now. Yeah. Hard oh, to come by. Well, you can go online and order hand sanitizer through Citronu, who does our custom uh, new bath products for the rooms up there. Oh, so I've excellent. been telling everyone that. I'm like, yeah, you might not be able to get it at the store, but there are a lot of like small businesses in the area. Mm -hmm. She makes hand soap and she's there. In fact, her hand soap's on sale right now. Citronu. Yeah, so another local S small business. S I T R O N U. Yep. And S I T? S S I T. It is. Okay. Yeah. S I T R O N U. And you can find her online. Um, she's out in Flint Hill or oh, Huntley. Cool. Huntley, maybe. Yeah. Um, Pretty cool. uh, uh, yep. And, uh, and she's got hand sanitizer. So there you <laughs> All go. All right. So do make a run for it then. That's right. <laughs> Okay, so what inspired you to create all of this and why here in Marshall in Fauquier County? What brought you here? Uh, so my my former uh, life partner um, uh, got a job in Alexandria. We had been living in um, New York for about 10 years. I moved there with him from Chicago. Um, and uh, he got a job in Alexandria and at the time interior design was something that I could do, you know, anywhere. I mean, in fact, I still have clients, you know, I say all over the country, which sounds like I have a million clients and they're everywhere, but which is not the case, but I do have clients f near and far. And a million. <laughs> and a million. Okay. No. no. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so when we moved down here, I continued, you know, servicing my clients in New York. Um, but I go down to Miami, I, Dallas, you know, um, yeah, so. Um, so that's why you're here. Yes, that's but right. But what inspired so, you to um, start everything else? You had the design right. company, brought so, that with you. So I had been, right, so I had been designing, um, which has been, which has been great. I've been doing that since 2007. Um, so I think we're 12, 13 years. And, um, and how that started at the time was, my dad studied architecture and, well, yes, taught architecture. Um, he taught for 37 years, um, not architecture that whole time, but, um, uh, and funny, I never learned CAD and it was one of the things he taught. <laughs> Great. Um, but my mother mm -hmm. also studied design and they lived in a beautiful home with lots of European imports mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, and when I was in uh, junior high and high school, I got involved in theater. Um, but one of the things that I always did along with being on stage was, um, and especially after college and professionally, um, when I was acting professionally, um, was I still always worked in the scene shop, still always worked in the costume shop. So construction and design and, you know, and, and not only in uh, hard materials, but in fabrics and things like that. So it was all, and then with my parents just, kind of was the whole culmination of everything. Um, and I worked for Lars Bolander in New York and Lars talks a oh, lot. Lars, Lars Bolander. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, thought you said I worked for Lars Bolander in New York um, and Lars talks in his books and in person a lot about how theatrical in d design is, mm -hmm. um, which I agree with. Um, so uh, so uh, fast forward, we're here now. Um, and uh, real world problems, you know, uh, sometimes business would get really lean. So out of necessity, I decided I needed to diversify. Mm -hmm. So that's what 8393 was about, was about getting my hands in all many pots, um, which has been great. Um, and it's great to own the real estate where my businesses are located. Um, I think if you can afford to do that, it's fantastic. And especially, you know, like if I was leasing somewhere right now, I'd have just closed. <laughs> you know, the the fact hard that, to do that right, when you're here. You it is. It's harder out. when you own the building. Um, so that's so it's actually you know kind of great to have to know that the investment is there in the long term. You know, it's we have that long term investment in the real estate, which is which is great. It's a it it provides some peace of mind.
And what made you decide to turn the building into a space for the rooms up there in the drawing room? The building. The building so, just, lent, just told you that's what it had to have. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I talk, believe you. <laughs> no, it is exactly what happened. I talk a lot about context when I'm designing homes. Um, and so um, my, friend, uh, my friend Diana and I had been talking for years it's amazing to be able to say that now because I feel like I met her yesterday, but she, we had been talking for years about having a business together. Um, and we looked at the old post office here in town oh, where, Whole yeah. Locks, where Whole Locks is now, um, which is significantly smaller than where we are now. Um, and just couldn't, you know, the timing wasn't right. Um, but a part of it was, this is my friend who has a home out here, but spends most of her time in Alexandria mm -hmm. and her husband and I, uh, me too wanted her out here more so <laughs> it was very practical and like let's develop this business where you know that will draw her out here so she'll be out here more um so uh yeah so um then there was the building and where we're sitting right now the shop was divided up into and i had spent a lot of time in this building because it was being used as a fabric store mm -hmm. um by a former tenant not the owner but the tent there was a tenant um, who was leasing the space um, and using it as a fabric store. And so back in the back, there were seven rooms back there. It was actually a banquet hall built in, um, built in the 1970s. Um, so that was obvious, you know? We, I thought I was gonna put my shop back there because I didn't need it to be up on this. I didn't need the studio to be on the street. You know, we were gonna, you know, run mostly by appointment anyway. Um, and we can do that back there and then lease this front space out because it would be, you know, it's got a lot of ni nice big bay window on the street and a lot of visibility. It'd be a pretty easy lease. Um, but we opened up that room and people were like, we want to have our events there. And we were like, well, I guess it's going to be an event space. Plus it probably helps you to yeah. have daily activity. I mean, I know right, not yes. right now, but daily activity in the front window as people yeah. walk by. Yeah. Um, if it were a banquet hall, that would only be the case when there was an event happening. Right, right. I mean, the banquet hall would have never been up here. Oh. but but we would have leased this out to another to business yeah and not had a banquet hall at all okay um uh but i was like well and i wanted a big open room with high ceilings i mean that's what i wanted that was the bank down the street i mean mm -hmm. i wanted that big kind of mercantile feel, feeling space which is what the banquet hall feels like it's got high ceilings and it's a big broad room um lots of light and lots of windows um it's just not on the street um, so, I mean, it was fine. I'd seen smaller spaces with low ceilings before and it, it's, it's worked out fine. And especially because the banquet hall wanted to be a banquet hall. Um, and then someone had been uh, leasing out rooms upstairs, Airbnb-ish, oh. you know. Um, when the building was being used as one business, it really never made a lot of sense. I mean, it, it squirrels or I mean, it started being constructed in 17. I mean, there are parts of it that date back to 1700. Oh, no, not 1700, sorry. Um, <laughs> fake news. Fake news. Um, 1800. Okay. Um, it, and it's a part of the- and I it's wasn't going to question you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I know, I said it with such conviction. <laughs> you did. Um, that, uh, tricks of the trade. <laughs> speak with confidence. <laughs> All right, but we're going to yeah, speak sorry. the truth from yes, here on out, right. okay? Right. Um, so, the, it's a it's a stone storehouse uh, that was built in 1800 and sadly no one gets to see it because it's our utility area and that's kind of where what it was you know for previous owners um anyway so being that the building is so com compartmentalized and my kind of long game is having an inn somewhere i mean that's my retirement plan is to have an inn or bed and breakfast somewhere um i've always wanted that and so it was like well, let's test the waters, Practice. you know, right. So, and it just made sense. It was, it was, um, you know, there's a, it's a, got a private, we're going to go look at it, but it's got a private entrance and a side, you know, and, and the banquet hall, even my business, you know, I'm really familiar with the town and surrounding towns and we didn't want to compete with, we wanted to, we wanted to have businesses here that were complementary to the town that provided services and provided things that other businesses didn't already provide. So someone else might come in and have guest accommodations here in the future, fine, whatever. But when we started, there weren't any, you know, that there was there was one in the Plains previously. And I think there is one, I think they've opened or are gonna open 
uh, an inn again in the plains. Oh. But when we opened, there wasn't anything. So we had these rooms here and between Del Plain and the Plains and Marshall, there wasn't anything. I, there's plenty of Airbnb, I think. I think there's a lot of Airbnb right. in the area, but we are actually licensed commercial space for lodging. So if someone's going on Expedia or TripAdvisor, we are what they find in this area. We're the only thing. So that made me feel good because, you know, we were, we were providing a supportive business, you know, a place for people that eat at Field in Maine or that go to the wineries or eat at, you know, want to go to the Red Truck Bakery or go to, you know, Johnny Monarchs or whatever, you know, those, you have a place to stay. So, um, so that's kind of where that business came from, but it really was about the building. The building is like, this is what I want to be. And, you know, they had tried like the building whisper, right? Well, they had tried, <laughs> well, I have vision like that. You know what I mean? I don't, even when I go into somebody's house or I go in to look at a listing, I'm not looking at what's there. I'm looking at what will be there. I mean, it, I think wallpaper and paint choices and things like that can be really distracting to people, but I don't see that. I look right through it. Um, so that's how this building was. I mean, I could see the banquet hall as a banquet hall, even though it was seven office spaces, you know? Um, yeah. Okay, so you decided on all the different buildings or all the different businesses that the building said it needed. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like setting them up? Because each one of those businesses is very different and they're they're distinct from each other. It's not, right. you know, one business that does a bunch of things, they're separate businesses. So what was it like setting up each individual one? And what process did you have to go through in Fauquier County to get that done? How did it go? Well, did they that, help you? Because that just sounds like a mess to me. That's well, a lot. I think the best thing that we did was to open them all the same month, three years ago. <laughs> that was Simultaneous that was, chaos. It's amazing. <laughs> um, so the design business was easy because I had that already in New York. So all I did was transfer it down here. It wasn't that big of a deal. And, you know, and I was doing it and it, it was already established down here because I was doing it out of a studio, um, not in my house, but next to my house. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously the accommodations, that was a whole new thing, except for the fact that I had worked for, you know, Marriott in Alabama for a while and had worked on a cruise ship and had been around hospitality. So I had some experience with it, um, being like a concierge and working the front desk and things like that. So, I mean, I had some actual firsthand experience not managing it, but, um, but this was not, you know, it wasn't 20 rooms, it wasn't 40 rooms, it's three, <laughs> you know? So it made it a little right. And they were already doing it here. And there's a distinction called, the, the county, when, when I explained everything, you know, I started with at the, as, at the uh, small business development center with Christine, Chris, and she was like, I mean, I get the feeling that you can do all of this, but you literally can't actually do all of this. <laughs> and I was like, well, give me a minute. Um, I mean, I'm tired now, but I mean, but at the time I was like, let's do it. Um, so she gave me a lot of guidance. Um, and the county, you know, knowing that we weren't, you know, that we were really trying to provide a complimentary, you know, business model. Um, and that this had tried to be a banquet hall previously. And that, um, and that, and, and wanting to kind of support new business on Main Street and Marshall specifically to see some growth and some revitalization, we're very supportive. So, and we didn't go to them saying, this is what we want to do. How do we do it? And they were like, you can't. And we were like, but we want to, you know, we, it was, this is what we would like to do. Can you help, how close can you help us get? You know, but we don't know any better. This is our dream, you know, is there some version of that that you can help us achieve? And they were like, absolutely. That's a great way to start the conversation. I, I agree. I mean, it's, it's, you wanna avoid looking for a, needle, for a needle in a haystack, right? You, I mean, you, so we went in and we said, there's this haystack and we want something that looks like a needle. <laughs> you know, Needle-ish. You know, we, it doesn't have to be the actual needle, you know, because okay, we so could spend years yeah. like looking through the haystack for this needle. <laughs> and they were like, well, we have this crochet hook. Will that work? <laughs> um, so we, the distinction was tourist home, which I hadn't even heard of, but it was, you know, it was close enough. 
Um, and then the banquet hall in order to get the accommodation back there because it was the infrastructure was already here in the building because they had built it as a banquet hall. Um, they just couldn't get a permit because they didn't have enough parking. Well, they didn't have any parking. So we bought the lot behind us and turned it into parking. And we don't have 75 parking spaces, but that's not how parking works. They give you X, there's a, it's a formula. So you can have, if you have this many parking spaces, you can have a buy right for this many guests. Yeah. And I think one of the things that helps us out is that banquet hall, people who are having an event here aren't staying overnight. And they're generally in the evening after business hours, like after six o'clock. So any business that's going on up front with design or any of the retail, um, that's happening during the day. And then all of that's shut down and gone by the time someone's coming in to have an event in the back. And then those people leave and they're not staying overnight. And so the overnight guests are the only people here overnight. Okay. So it allowed us to kind of take advantage of the full day in shifts. Excellent. And that, so that's really unique to our business model, but that's one of the things that helped it work. Excellent. Okay. So now you've been here, I think you said since 2007, is that right? Or maybe not. Did you buy this building then? No, 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 no. 2007 is when Daniel J. Moore, well, when David and Daniel Design was established. Okay. Which so is how now have you been Daniel J. Moore. 83, 93 West Main. Uh, just three years. Three years. We've owned it, I think, for four, four and a half, but it went through a pretty major renovation when we bought it. Oh, right. Yeah, um, you had to work I'm, on the Renovation first. by us. Because I know these yeah. rooms up there, they are gorgeous. And uh, before yeah, Daniel were... J. Moore came to town, that is where my accountant was. <laughs> so right. because it was not a gorgeous bedroom there. Well, that, um, that was one of the things, too, is it's, it, they those rooms you have to listen to the building. You have to you have to make an informed decision based on the context and uh, yeah, the context it was not a good accountant's office. Right. Really so you're scary. like wearing high heels or hard leather soled shoes and a suit and going <clears throat> upstairs into this very primitive. I remember ducking and I'm it, not that yeah. tall. <laughs> right. I mean, it feels like being in an old farmhouse, which which is like not great for business offices. Yeah but perfect for accommodations. But as a historic house, <laughs> That's with, right. Yeah, with rooms yeah. is gorgeous. That's perfect for okay, that. Okay, so in your experience here in Fauquier County now for the last three years, what would you say is the biggest challenge to owning businesses in Fauquier County? And what is the biggest benefit to you of being here in Fauquier County? What was the biggest challenge? I thought I had an answer to this question. What was the... You've been asked ahead of time. <laughs> I, I know, but I, maybe I've read it wrong. Oh. Um, okay. The, no, no, well, that's okay. That's okay. To the best of your yeah. ability. Yes. Um, so the biggest challenge. Well, I. Oh, you know what? That's it. Was it was the thing about diversifying. So it's not specific to owning a business here, but for me, owning a business at all was depending on the regular business to kind of sustain mm -hmm. it, and um, you know, due to economy and you know just seasonal, you know constraints. Um, interior design can really have some highs and lows. And um, I got to the point where I was like, oh my God, I have got to have a more regular income. So that was, that was the thing that was challenging to me was having a sustainable, regular, reliable income source through the design business. Because um, I'd have huge projects and then you know, that would be like, and I can't do, you know, I'm working on a 16,000 square foot house right now. I mean, I mean, I can't do three of those a year. I mean, I can kind of do one, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm one guy and assistant, you know, I, um, and, and I like that. I mean, I'm not afraid to have the business grow and I have the resources, like as far as potential staff to, to, to accommodate growth, but I like shopping. <laughs> I don't want to send somebody else out to do it. I want to do it. I yeah, want to. There are things you I, want to hand right, off. I want to make the choices, handle. and I want to pick the. I mean, that's why people are coming here. They they want to know what I like. Um, so 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 how did I address that? It was this building and diversifying. Excellent. Yeah. I know you know something that you told me earlier. So I'm going to go back to and relate to Walker County is yeah. that during this 
you know, COVID-19 situation, mm -hmm. you know, obviously business has changed. Yes. Um, people aren't um, coming and seeing big accommodations right now. Right. Um, they're not having their events, although they postponed. You haven't had um, yeah, we had, many we cancellations. Yeah, no, we only had good. one cancellation, which is, but we're very grateful. It has shifted your business, yes. um, at least some of them a little bit and some of them a lot. Um, but also you sought assistance um, that I think you said you received through the county that's helping you yep. make it all the way through. Yep. That's right. So, you know, because of the nature of Daniel Jane Moore design, it's Feast or Famine at times. Mm -hmm. Now it's sort of, you were looking at the other businesses uh, to feast mm -hmm. the famine. Right. Um, and and, and now anyway. we're, the, um, the famine is feasting. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I was trying we, to do yeah. that and it didn't work. I, um, <laughs> but talk but about the, yeah, how so it affected design, you and yeah. what, what kind of relief you've received um, through local resources? I I don't want to celebrate, and I don't want to um, make light of the tragedy and the stress and the trauma that many people are experiencing. Um, but I but regardless of my circumstances, I do tend to kind of look for the silver lining. So the. As Christine said, I literally can't do all of this. And she's right. Um, I was getting really, really burnt out. And so during this time, I'm really grateful to have, I have four projects going on right now um, and they continue to, uh, one of them's wrapping up like this week. And then I've got another one wrapping up in the next month. Um, one of them's gonna continue on for probably another year Excellent. or so. Um, and then I have another one that's probably going to end in the next like four to six weeks. Um, so, and hopefully by that time, other things will come up. Um, but if worse comes to worse, you know, we have this building. I mean, it might be hard to sell right now, but I mean, but that's my worst case scenario is I have this real estate to fall back on. Um, but I am really enjoying just focusing on these four projects right now and not chasing my tail, you know, um, we do have we've we have our first guest kind of breaking the seal um this weekend upstairs it's been like probably 10 weeks since we've had any guests and this time last year in those 10 weeks i think we probably had at least 50 if not 60 wow. bookings wow. um so to have zero is pretty potentially devastating um but we don't have the, you know, we don't have the, all of, we don't have the same overhead without having guests either. So that's helped a little bit. Um, and then we did everything that we could. We, I mean, I reached out as Jeannie down at um, Virginia Regenerative Medicine and Spa was like my COVID mentor. <laughs> she, she just pushed everything to me and be like, apply for this, apply for that, get on this thing, go to this thing. She was on every yeah. time I forwarded the messages she, I got from the county. She was you know, yeah. thanking me and asking questions. She was really ahead of the game and just kind of dragged me right up in her wake, which I'm so grateful for. Um, I, that I applied for things I forgot I applied for. And then suddenly there was, you know, a little money in my account. I was like, Sounds Oh like my it. God. Um, so we got a little bit, we didn't get a whole lot. And we don't have a big crew here. We don't have a big staff. And a lot of the people that work here are subcontractors or um, uh, freelancers, I guess. Um, so we don't, we run pretty, pretty lean that way. Um, but just there's laundry and housekeeping and, you know, and, uh, and other things like we, the, our guests upstairs have breakfast at the Red Truck Bakery. We haven't been paying for that because they haven't been eating it, you know, so things like that. So it kind of leaned down naturally on its own to a degree. And then the fact that the drawing room, um, all but one, um, one of our clients uh, chose to um, postpone. So we only had one cancellation back there, which it was a little disheartening because it, that, that business has really taken a while to kind of get going, mm -hmm. but it was yeah, taking no off. Family. It yeah. was crazy. We had we went from having like a couple events back there a year to having between, mm, I think like uh, March, from March to June, we had 22 things booked. I was like, oh, wow. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, it was really great. So, so, so hopefully out we'll, now or is it going to lump all together uh, as soon as everybody uh, can get back? We're, we're trying to be as accommodating as possible. So, um, so party we're just for the rest of the year, basically. Right, right. We're just... <laughs> We're I just like writing, like yeah, we're writing it out with them as, as, as long as it takes, you know, when, it, you know, we're grateful for, for them not canceling. Yeah. Um, 
uh, but we're not jerks either, you know. I mean, it says, you know, no, no cancellations, no refunds, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, but these I mean, are extenuating circumstances they are. that no one could have anticipated. Exactly. We did the same thing when I was helping with exactly. Newsburg events. You know, they're all sponsorship vendor driven things that are, you know, rain or shine happening no matter what, no refunds. Well, yeah. you know, this is a very different situation yeah. than anything. And well, and we're meeting each, I feel like they're meeting us halfway. Like they're, they're, they're looking for us to allow them to reschedule and they're not asking for a refund and right. we're saying yes. And they're saying, great, well, we won't cancel. So it's, it, okay. it's been a very um, collaborative effort, which has been really, really great. So. so you did receive some aid though to help. It wasn't all we did. just the business shifting. We did. So that's yep. good. Um, you we know, did. some of the resources that we have here in the county. Yep. Um, so yeah. it's good it, to know which fact, businesses that went to yeah. I'm not on the inside of that. We we um we got a loan. We got a very small grant from the from the EIDL, you know, from that advance, okay. you know. Um remind me EIDL, the Oh, I just, disaster list. And Something it everyone's calling it the EDL. So you all know what it is. Epidemic. Yeah. Yes. Impact that. disaster. No. Yes. 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 Is that yes, it? Yes, okay. Yes, 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 Economic yes. impact disaster loan. All right. Yeah, wait a minute. That. I have, I have a correction or a question from the audience. <laughs> Economic <laughs> injury disaster loan. See, so yeah, there we I, go. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Daniel, for saying I was right, but I'm not. So Economic good. injury disaster loan. That so is, there was a grant. Yeah, there was a grant involved in that, and we received. Do, many of you who will have received some of this is, assistance understand how modest it is. So mm -hmm. I don't want people to think that it was a big windfall. Um, but it, but every little, yeah, it's just but, a, but every little bit it. helps, you mm -hmm. know, and we're not looking, you know, we well, are not devastated. <sighs> that's I mean, right. The shop is so full, I was, the sh projects, right. And I was able um, to ask, you know, for a forbearance on a couple of my loans and was granted that mm -hmm. by the bank. So I wasn't looking to take advantage of anything. You know, I just, I, I, I took the advice of a couple of friends and, and of the county and applied for what I needed, for, applied for what I could. I, just like that, I would try to be really proactive, like asking, like calling the banks and saying, hey, can you forbear this? Can you forbear this payment? Can and so you, for you know, any of the students who are watching, um, mm -hmm. explain loan forbearance. Um, so they a take, great tool for an entrepreneur, even yeah. just someone on a personal level who's having trouble and you have loans. Yeah. Um, you don't you know. want to do, you don't want to try and do it all the time and they're not going to let you do it all the time. Yeah. But, but if you get into a real jam, they will take, you know, a, a, you know, a given number of months from now. They're not, it's, it's, it's not being excused. You're not having that part of the loan excused. They're taking it and they're putting it on the end. So you're going to pay it. You're just not paying it now. So if you have a five-year car loan <clears throat> and you were at month one when all of this hit, say possibly the first three months of your car loan, um, they would they would tell you you don't have to pay for the next yes. three months, but you would add three months of You'd time add three to months the end of that loan. It, ish. Um, it's probably going to be a little bit more because so you do still accrue the interest. So. Right. So you're not winding up paying less in the end. You're, you're yeah, just right. not having to pay while you're going through such a difficult time. Yeah. Um, it'll, 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 and it's, it's been really great for me because I don't, I, there's a certain amount of pressure that is good for me as far as work is concerned, but that stress, pressure and stress aren't necessarily the same thing. Stress is, I, I think, more detrimental. Like, so having some of that stress alleviated has allowed me or helped me to, to, to do better work right now. Yeah, pressure can sometimes add clarity. Yes. Stress usually adds confusion yes. and chaos. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Good. Yeah. I like that you said that. I yeah. never thought about that. I use yeah. the word, I probably overuse the word stress. Yeah. I like the word pressure. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Now I had to cheat a little. I'm reading my questions now, which we handily put in front of us so you wouldn't notice we're reading. Um, and where are we here? Which ones have we answered? Um, um, so uh, we talked about the restrictions and what the virus has done to your business. Oh, well, uh, but I can say this more clearly. The, okay. So the guest rooms went, we have had a hundred, so how COVID has impacted the guest rooms and the banquet hall, a hundred percent. The design now, and, and I could say that of the shop, we have had no one, in the, I mean, I just had my first appointment this past Monday, um, but 
but design wise privately you know i have continued to do that work so that has been a saving grace and there's that diversification again you know i had these three things tanked right now but i have this one thing that's kind of sustaining me you know which is good so yeah so i'm going to ask you because oh, this is, several this of the, the students day. that's the one yeah. i was headed yeah. for uh several of the students that we've had in our pilot program have said to me um what happens when a business fails what makes a business fail you know everybody seems to be really scared of failure so as an entrepreneur um tell us what that word means to you uh it's I think in some cases it's not doing what you needed to do when you needed to do it. You know, um, running a business and being an entrepreneur is always about making tough decisions. Um, but if you think about it as making an example, as as setting an example and leading, um, it can be a little less daunting. Um, and again, back to that kind of my optimistic nature. As hard as some of the decisions that I've made along the way have been. Um, like I had to let go of someone not too long ago. Um, and that was, that was tough. Um, but I think in the long run, it was, it's probably the best thing for both of us. You know, there's the, if you look for it and you have the right outlook, I mean, you're going to perceive people as being in a specific place. And unless you're in your head, you never know where they really are. <laughs> right. So, so it's, your perception and your mindset are really, really important because uh, adversity and challenges and um, and and you know possible devastation is always about outlook. It's always about context. You know that comes back to you know I would talk about context and design, but that's context in life. Like your your worst is always going to be someone else's best. Always, there's always going to be someone else whose very best, the best they can do is your worst, you know? So if you take that and get off your back, you know, um, and, and relax a little bit, like in a time like this, like I get, I get, oh, how are we going to, you know, you got to calm down. You got to take a breath. Um, a lot of business is about resilience, you know, and about coming in every day and doing the little things you need to do every day, going online, doing your social media, returning the phone calls, doing the follow-up. You know, those are little things that you do every day and doing them every day, not, not giving in and staying in bed or, you know, or giving into like, I'm, I've been a little depressed along with everybody, you know? I mean, it's, you know, I have good days and bad days during this, but if I make my appointments to go on a Zoom call or do, a, you know, do a virtual tour like today, it's great that like some activity always helps with that it's always and i've said in uh, meetings before you know if you're falling you know if, if you feel like you're falling and you're like i don't know what i'm doing just make sure that you're falling forward you know <laughs> what i mean like you're that you're falling toward you know that you're not falling still back moving. on the back of your head right that you're still falling ahead um yeah and and i think for me to a part of failure is disappointing clients you know um and sometimes that can't be avoided. You know, that's a mindset too, like not taking everything personally. I've got a lot of pressure coming from my clients today, but I know it's not aimed at me because the thing he's upset about, he knows that that is out of my control. He's just venting. Sometimes, you know, I get to be close to my clients and they feel a personal connection and sometimes they'll vent at you and it's not about you. They're just, you know, they're confiding in you. You know, a lot of times you're right. Hard. And now we're getting into the therapy yeah. appointment part of this. A lot of times though, people who seem to be upset with you, if you take a step back and you don't take it personally, and this will happen as an entrepreneur a lot, um, you find out they really just have something on their minds and they just need to get it off their chest. They just need someone to listen. Um, so right. they may not actually be looking for you to do anything for them other than just take it um, because momentarily they need to give it. Yeah, and in that moment, because of your mindset, you were thinking that it was about you and that they were upset with you. But what they were actually doing was giving you a compliment. They were trusting you with their feelings yeah. and with their emotions, you know. Point. But it's but that takes that takes maturity and time and intuition to kind of understand how that's happening. Um, but you can choose to just be like, oh, don't take this personally. Not not be reactionary. Like take a minute and be like, wait, what was that really about? Um, but that can be really helpful. Um, yeah. And I think, 
you know, I get, I, I put more pressure on myself than anyone as far as like paying the bills and getting my vendors paid and, you know, making my payments to the bank on time. You know, I throw myself under the bus first ahead of everyone else every time. I never make someone else suffer the consequences. I'm always the one that's dealing with all of that. So that makes me feel good. But, you know, I also like to say luck favors the prepared. And so the more prepared you can be, the better, the more, the, the, like these guest rooms, there's three of them, not 20. We started small, you know, so that, that, that made it easy to manage in and of itself. You know, it couldn't really get away from us because there weren't that many rooms. It was a small way, you know, because we hadn't done it before. If this, if it's, if, if your passion is to start a business that you know better than anyone else and you know it inside and out and up ways and down ways, great, do it, you know, but if it's something that you're considering if it's something that's sparking your curiosity and something that's kind of you know on your bucket list of like oh i'd love to do that someday start small you know or um or at least start start at a size that you can you know keep your hands around um and as i say plan you know and prepare you know don't do too much of it i mean like even in design you know you got to start and and i don't really draw in a whole lot of detail because my personal experience over the years, because so I primarily- No drawing and no categories. <laughs> That's right. No, my, my drawing <laughs> skills are great. I draw oh, okay. beautifully. I just hate drawing. Oh, okay. Um, but, but, but that if I was doing new construction, that would be a different story because you have more control. But when you're, but I do primarily renovation and historic renovation at that. So I could spend days, months drawing and then have it all go out the window because you know we run into some construction issues that we weren't prepared for. So a certain amount of success is about really being able to pivot, being able to, uh, Neil said recently, ride the wave. And I, but we're gonna get to this question about, I'm gonna go right into it right now. Okay, I won't even ask, just right. go for it. One person <laughs> on, you know, one person, one, one colleague or, or, um, or What's the, what is the other word I'm looking for? Peer? One, sure yeah, peer, saying. yeah. <laughs> um, is Neil Wavra at, at Field in Maine. He's, I call him the Main Street Dad. Um, he's, he's smiling, his energy's infectious, and he's an inspiration. And, and we, I like to think of us on Main Street, walking arm in arm down the street, just taking it by storm, all working together. And he's got that same mentality. He drags us all along, you know, and he's like, hey, over here, do this thing. No one's supposed um, to get drugged. You're supposed to be arm yeah. in arm. No, we are. We are. But it's but it's like you get caught up in everyone's wake. We're just all riding the same wave. Um, but he posted about that the other day. We, you, 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 you get in this um, kind of mindset where you want to be ahead so that you can relax. Well, that's then you're always constantly like, ah, you know, if you're riding the wave, you've done enough work that you're like, ah, and it's really exciting on the way. Oh my God, oh my God, we're gonna crash. But you stay right there and you're not doing extra work. You're doing enough work. And there's a, it's kind of, there's a magic scenario there that allows you kind of the thrill of being on top of it. It, you know, it's, it's, it's the difference between a client calling me to complain about something or to bring up an issue to me and me being like, I can't deal that with right now and being like, oh, you know, uh, right. These things happen. This is a part of business. Um, do you have time tomorrow afternoon? I'll come over, you know, like being able to accommodate in that way, because I'm not trying to get on top of it all. And I'm not so incredibly disappointed when, when I'm behind um, or what I perceive as being behind. So, so Neil is a big influence on, huge. Your, on your calm and, and yeah. And I think as far as like main street in the face of COVID, as far as like his pivot, has been incredibly inspirational to everyone. I mean, they are killing it. I found myself it's watching huge. a Facebook Live of Neil on Field in Maine. Um, he was doing a virtual tasting and I'm on there watching and I'm I'm asking questions and I'm so involved and I'm thinking, this is really hard. How am I gonna guess what he's drinking? That's when I realized he's way smarter than me. You were supposed to go pick up and buy the bottle of wine and bring uh, it home and you would be tasting it too. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, he's he's done a good job though. I think he was the first one I ever saw that did that. Um, they really have. to keep their tastings, but you, yeah. you come by the bottle, take it home and do it. It keeps them engaged with their audience and their patrons. And it's providing a, a positive distraction in the face of all of this. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, them pivoting to doing a carry, take, take away dinners and things like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, they just figured it out. 
from day one they, they were like we are gonna figure it out and they're figuring they it out stop and it's, moving. yeah not um, once yeah and it really i'm so grateful to be in this community for colleagues like that you know for Jeannie, for neil because because i don't feel like i'm on my own i feel like i have you know when i go into field in maine i feel like the family like i know everybody over there you know right. i mean i really feel like a part of their team same thing down at the spa. I walk in there and I feel like, not like a VIP, like I feel like a part of the team, you know? And um, and you don't find that everywhere. So that's exceptional here on Main Street. And it, and it will be the key to the survival of some of our businesses because it keeps us optimistic. It's it, There's a real sense of security there, you know, knowing that you're in it, that you've got so the support. I'm going to go back and answer the question you couldn't answer early. I think yes. one of the biggest benefits to you of being in Fauquier County is the sense of business community, um, Truly. especially um, not just Fauquier County, but right here in Marshall. I went to the to the Fauquier Enterprise Center one day to have a meeting with someone that I didn't know was canceled, and Jennifer <laughs> was there, and I was like not I'm in surprised a good, to see uh, you. right, and I was not in a good way. And we had this full on like counseling session. It was great. I remember, I was yeah, very happy it, was, to step in. it was huge. It was, and it was full of like epiphanies and light bulb, you know, it was an opportunity. It was a great conversation. I wasn't, you know, that I, you know, I could have been frustrated that I didn't have this appointment that I had come in for, but it was an opportunity. It was like, it was what it was supposed to be. It was what it needed to be. I enjoyed it. Yep. So now we've exhausted the list of questions. It's time to go take a tour. Are you ready? Right. We're going to try this. We, I understand, are walking through three different Wi-Fi zones, so we're going to see how far we get. Um, <laughs> don't make that face. Cassidy's here, so everything's going to go well. It's all on Cassidy now, poor thing. Um, but I have, I have faith. We're going to try, and she's going to scream at me from the top of her lungs if I either bump into something or if we go offline for any period of time. So... I'm going to follow you around because okay. I got to carry the laptop. Um, I'm going to be watching my feet. Let's do it. Um, so you show me everything. <clears throat> and so I have to make sure we can see Dan. Um, so I'm going to be walking a little bit sideways. So Cassie may be right. There we go. There he is. There we go. Um, yeah. hold it. Can you hold it higher so they can see the shop? Or here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, because I wanted to see the shop. Okay. So this is so this is domestic aspirations, and I moved my I moved my office out here. Um, because I'm the one that sells everything and, and I wanted people to understand that it was a design studio. So all the bookcases have gone from having, you know, accessories and things on them to being full of swatches and fabric samples. Excellent. Um, all right. And so here's more shop over here. Okay. Um, upholstery and case goods and tables and catalogs. Um, because everything that's is beautiful. primarily where catalogs. So you're going to so you're going to come in and sit down and we're going to look at fabric samples and we're going to, you know, look at sofa frames and order custom upholstery for you. Um, huh? Yep. Um, should we go to the banquet hall first or upstairs? It's completely up banquet to you. Hall last. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> so this, I used to use this space, but now mm -hmm. this is gathered stems floral couture. And when Ashley can order fresh flowers again, there will be f fresh flowers in here and she'll be running it as a typical florist. Um, but I gave her this little room because um, Kate Sprague brought her in and they were like, she's looking for a space and she didn't want to be in, a, the, in either of the other old spaces that had florists in them. And I was like, we don't have a sink or anything. I can't. And then I remember there's a door in the back of this room that goes to an old kitchen. And I was like, well, she can have that too. It's perfect. That is great. Yeah. And I love that this has turned into like a name dropping of other small business owners and entrepreneurs is, in Fauquier County. I love it. I look for any interview I've ever given. Like I don't, like, I don't love all of this. I like it more now because it allows me to support my fellow business owners, which I feel like I owe a lot to. And this is the way that I can give back to them. This is excellent. And this is gorgeous. I know they're all the flowers. Her, her mother, look at this. Her mother does all of this pottery. No, no, my. Does, does the, um, and there's, and she does, uh, there's holiday. Like she had those holiday, those vintage looking Christmas trees. Well, she has yeah. the mold and she paints them. Yeah, so oh, that's, I what love this, those that's what this picture is. This is her. Oh, wow. This is her mold, and then her hand painting. Yeah, excellent. Hand poured, hand painted here, locally. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, regionally, anyway. This is the front door, so we're not using any front doors today. But this is the foyer that you would usually come into. All right. So if you, so you were see, staying, you right. would see this as you enter. Yeah, and then you see my door here with my nice logo. Yeah, that's right. 
And so, and then Gavin Stems is in there now too. This is Hunt Country Kitchen and Bath Studio. Okay. So this is one of the sublease spaces. This is where Kathy would be yeah. if she were here. That's right. And she'll sell you kitchen cabinets and a beautiful kitchen or bathroom. She does, she does whole home interiors. She's not just confined to that. But like I say, I'm interiors and I don't talk about kitchen and bath that much, but I do kitchen and bath too. So we, we cross over, but, we, but our styles are different, complementary, but different, you know, so we don't like, we're not worried about competing with each other. Excellent. So Mind now, your head. Yeah, okay. watch your head. So <laughs> now we are back in the entrance to the rooms up there. All right, I love the beams along the ceiling, the pine cone wreaths. Yeah, this is the entrance. Mm -hmm. And here on the table, um, they'll have their notes and, uh, and keys when they come in. And as you can see here, according to Lifestyle Magazines, we were the best of 2019, which was our <laughs> second year. Not so shabby. Yeah, not so shabby. And here's, oh, and look, here's our Citronu oh, hand sanitizer. Excellent. S-I-T-R-O-N-U, Citronu. Sorry, when you said it, I couldn't <laughs> imagine it wasn't C, like yep. So now, did I know. So now we go up there to the rooms. To the rooms up there. there. And we're hoping Jennifer makes it So this is guest room one. Um, it's above the original stone storehouse. And so we call it storehouse one. All right. Very nice. Yep. And as you can see, we can make up the are available to purchase downstairs through the shop. Uh -huh. So all the headboards, linens, all of the case goods. Many of the case goods that look like antiques up here are actually uh, reproductions, high quality reproductions that are for sale downstairs. Right. And Jennifer's gonna make it up the stairs. So this is the bathroom here. Oh, great mirror. And the blinds. What did you say? Oh, and the little makeup towel. I like that. Yep. Did I, okay, there we go. Little details. Okay. We have our lavender truffles all the way from Aww. Dallas from uh, Grapevine. Um, they are uh, lavender infused caramel truffle um, nice. because our, the, our fragrance up here is lavender and sage, um, which is kind of unisex in the bathrooms, but fresh. Um, and so my mother, um, I wanted something that was special, you know, and so we looked for chocolate everywhere and I just wasn't inspired. Um, and then a friend of mine gave me these because her dad lived in, in Dallas. And this is her best friend that owns this chocolate company. I, I said, hey, mom, do you know this chocolate shop in Grapevine? And she was like, yeah, my art studio is right down the street from it. I go in there all the time. I was like, ah, perfect. <laughs> it's the little touches that make it so right, nice. I just wanted it to feel personal. So now really watch yourself. Okay. Down and then up. And we should. 
the sound and service should be back at the very least up here because we've got better uh, signal. Okay. So this is the last guest room. This is the counting room. The counting room. What are we counting? We are counting cattle. Ah, so, there we go. Well, now it makes sense. Right. So there one of the largest are. cattle drives in the U.S. used to come right down 55 here, right, right huh. down Main Street Marshall. And so um, huh. just to kind of give a shout out to that, we have this gorgeous uh, photograph of the Longhorns um, taken by Tara Yelenich Photography. Ah, very nice. Local and artist. And available for sale through Terry Yellenich Photography. I'm glad um, you're saying her last name. I never could do that. Yeah, and so and we have her photography for sale through the shop downstairs as well. Pretty mirror. Yeah. That's one of the few pieces that's not for sale up here. Um, uh, that is an actual antique. Um, but everything else in this room is for sale. Wonderful. And we do all the custom draperies and all the pillows and things through the shop too. Excellent. And as I was you saying, do that here? Um, yes, here locally in town. Um, and so, uh, and so, as you were saying, uh, Jennifer, about the rooms not being real big. I mean, they all have their different things. Like this, th this room has these window seats and the little table and chairs. Um, the middle bedroom has a little table and chairs, and then room one has the little sofa. Um, but we wanted the guests to have uh, beverage service and snacks and things like that and ice and a place where they could really sit down and be comfortable and, and um, kind of cohabitate, um, make new friends, have a rural experience. Excellent. So, so we give them the commons. So this is the commons. Nice. And a bee's nest. <laughs> yep. <We> empty? <laughs> yes, empty. Yeah. We, we decorate, um, we decorate these, uh, this space for the holidays. Oh, um, nice. Oh, yeah, and you can see over here we have a uh, coffee. Yep. We have coffee <laughs> and tea service, some Virginia peanut-based snacks, root eleven chips, an ice maker, and then down below there are additional. There's waters in the guest rooms, but there's additional waters and sodas here too. Excellent, everything so, you can yep. want. Lots and of details, games, games local Tears. magazines, scout guides. The scout guide. I've seen that in every room. <laughs> yep, the scout guide. Excellent. Every room. That's right. All right. So now we're gonna go. All the way back downstairs and all the way to the back to the banquet hall. Okay. And then we'll be done. This is just an interesting detail. I don't know if you can perceive it in the video, but this floor is very tilted here. <laughs> and you might think that- You probably notice it in the video by way of the screen doing this as I walk. You might, you <laughs> might think that it is a foundation issue, but we're actually standing on the roof of the old porch. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what people are looking at now, but I'm going to make it down. <laughs> there we go. Okay, safety first. Back up front. All right, here we go. Back to the flower shop. To the drawing room. Back through my aspirations. All right, well, I haven't heard Cassidy screaming at me again, so I think we're good. And so this this is another little room of the shop. Like we do clearance back here and then my office is through that door in there. Um, but it's just more, more retail space. Um, so this is not how- All right, sorry. This looks like yes, a little please. hand. Oh, from back there, it looked like a little hand. <laughs> Thought you had thing here. So. So this is not the way that guests or anybody would go. This is more kind of a utility hallway. Um, but at the back, guests of the banquet hall park in the back or out on the street. And then, um, and then here, if you can see, this is our greenhouse in here. It's actually one of my favorite things. Yeah, <laughs> see this beautiful green wall, big photo opportunity for people. Um, brides and grooms take their photos out there a lot. Um, it's used for a small chapel. Um, we have private dinners out there. Um, we serve tea six months out of the year, once a month in, in there in the green in the green room. Or excuse me, people keep calling it the green room. It's the greenhouse. <laughs> so, and this is the banquet hall. This is the drawing room. All right. Lovely sconces, yep. tables. Yep, it's twelve hundred square feet. We can uh, we have a by right. We can to seat to seat 75 in here. Um, there's a, there's two. 
I wasn't gym. planning to be in the shower. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to see what you were seeing there's, on screen. <laughs> there's, there's two bathrooms um, that are designated for use in this space. Um, it is commercially heated and cooled. Um, and again, we can seat up to 75 guests in the drawing room. A custom drapery. Um, use neutrals, um, but in context. So you can see it features hounds and horses and there's little churches. Mm -hmm. It's a very kind of bucolic rural scene, but it's neutral. So you can, so brides and grooms can still, you know, work with pretty much any color palette. And then we have these really pretty kind of French style plant stands um, that Ashley uses for, um, for overstock uh, for the shop up front. Um, but then we also rent to people who are using the space um, for their events because they look nice. Um, but they, but it's like a ballroom. Yeah, they, they don't have to be use dancing. It. That's right. That's right. You can, and we do have. We have maybe had, later. Right. Lessons. We have had some concerts in here, and people have approached us about uh, approached us about using it for dance lessons. I think that would be great. But yeah, go on if you if you're interested in having your next event here, you can go on the drawing room. The the drawing room. This the is drawing speaking. room. There we go. The drawing room at eighty three ninety three. So the drawing room at eighty three ninety three. Say it one more time. The drawing room at <laughs> 8393.com. Okay. Have we seen everything now? Let's see. I don't know how to get us both back on screen. There we go. Have we seen it all now? We have. We have. We've seen okay. it all. We've, we've seen, seen it all. We've we seen are all of it. an hour and three minutes now. So I oh, think that perfect. is sufficient. I think we did a great job. Thank you so much for having me Thank here. And everybody Thanks. come back next week. You're very welcome. Come back next week at 2.30. And we'll be having a discussion about workforce. <laughs> Perfect. Bye, guys. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you.